everyone, welcome to another episode of ClinBiz, where we love connecting with you on the business aspects of clinical trials. Uh, so in today's video, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about a very big pain point in our industry, which are CTA negotiations. Uh, we know that it's a big pain for both sponsors and sites, and if, you know, eventually who it really affects at the end of the day is um, our patients and how quickly we can get medicines out to them that is uh, drastically needed. So today I'm going to talk about one of the, the situations, one of the things, because I, I really have a, a thinking that CTA negotiation delays right, are really not a one-sided issue or it's not a one-issue issue, right? And so I think there's various components um, and various things or what I love to call villains that actually contribute to uh, CTA delays. Uh, I've actually have written a book, it's coming out in a couple of weeks. And what I love to do is take the next few weeks to um, sort of drop it in installments, a couple of um, the villains that I talk about in this upcoming book, but also what are some practical ways that as an industry, as sponsors, sites, and CROs, we can work out some practical ways to really defeat these villains. So in today's episode, I love to talk about this first uh, villain or this first part of, of really uh, what contributes to CTA delays. And I like to call it, you know, inefficient site budget negotiation. So I think this is one component of the CTA delays. Um, the actual budget, site budget, that is negotiated with our sites um, being a problem during CTA negotiations. So many of us have, you know, that work in the, in the actual contract area, um, we've seen, and, and obviously others that are working in clinical operations, where sometimes we've uh, gone pretty quickly through the legal aspect, the legal language, or the legalese of a CTA with a site, only to be stalled um, by the budget, by the actual budget negotiations. They're really coming to a, a stop in all those negotiations due to some budget um, issues that we may have. So what are today I just wanted to talk about just two practical ways. There's various ways. Um, I have much more included in the book, but here I just wanted to drop two very practical things that you can do today in your organization to really um, help with those CTA negotiations and specifically with your site budget negotiations. So number one, the number one thing that you can do as a sponsor, I'll speak from a sponsor perspective first, that you can actually do to speed up site budget negotiations is provide procedure level budgets. Um, this is something that I've seen being over a decade in the industry, working around this area, that some sponsors really sometimes neglect to see uh, the need to provide a procedure level budget to the sites, um, to the investigator sites during negotiations. So this is a big deal why. Um, sites when they're receiving, and I did spend a little bit of time on the site side too, um, throughout my, my decade in the industry so I just um, you know I've seen it from the perspective of the site too so when the site is actually receiving the site budget and the CTA documents for negotiations the first thing they're looking at one of the first things they're looking at in terms of the budget is really how it's comparing to the actual protocol um, they're actually looking at the protocol flow chart the schedule of events and doing a side-by-side -side, apples to apples comparison to see what has been included in that site budget template that the sponsor has sent right so in the very beginning if that is not provided to the site that is, you know, one initial thing that's already getting in the, the way of the negotiations and the way of the relationship going forward as well. So very important that sponsors provide um, not simply a overall per patient budget, which sometimes um, sponsors do, but actually very, very beneficial to provide a procedure level budget. Uh, some sponsors also do in a visit level and things of that nature. I mean, it's helpful, but it's not really what the sites need in order to effectively negotiate and to effectively actually see if their costs are being covered to do the actual trial. So that's the number one and that is as simple as it sounds a very big win for sponsors and a very big win for sites during the negotiations. So sponsors providing that procedure level budget um, is very important. Okay, and so I'll address already an objection that sometimes uh, we get when we're talking about procedure level budgets and, and spons some sponsors may say well isn't that going to actually delay negotiations? Because now sites are going to be uh, maybe negotiating on a procedure level, and now we're going back and forth, you know, 
on the cost of dry ice or even though dry ice is not voiceful usually but you know we're going through the cost of, of a very small procedure and now we're going back and forth and negotiating and that isn't that going to be adding to it and the simple answer is no and why I say that based on both my experience and the experience of various um, industry uh, colleagues that I have that I've spoken to directly on this piece and also some industry experts on this um, also hearing from the sites as well this is not something that delays negotiations okay you can still and, and why I'll say that is if you already have as a sponsor um, a very good process for your negotiation very uh, documented very well established on how you're going to be negotiating um, your fair market value process all those things up front you have that done it's not something that's going to be delaying you can still um, negotiate let's say on a per patient cost or, or a visit level however you're doing that um, you can still negotiate based on those parameters that you have already set and documented for your organization but what the procedure level uh, site budgets do, it's, it's simply giving that transparency to the sites that indeed all the, the events, all the, the procedures, all the things included in the schedule of events are also included in terms of a cost. Um, so that's all that it really does. And at the end of the day, um, if there are any situations where you're really way off um, on a procedure cost that the site is is um, requesting versus what the sponsor has provided, well, then that's the time to get on a phone call, right? That's the time to call each other up, have a conversation, have a conference call, whatever that may be. And I can assure you that 99% of the time, the situation is there is a misunderstanding on the actual procedure being done for the protocol. Uh, whether it be on a sponsor side or on the site side, there's just a misunderstanding and that's what perhaps that procedure is way off because it really shouldn't be way off, especially if that sponsor is using um, some industry standardized tools and um, to obtain those costs um, across the board. So that's, you know, that's one objection that can be thrown down and it's really something that I've seen uh, really improve negotiations across the board being from the site side and also um, on the sponsor side providing procedure level budgets. Um, second piece, second point, and this is number two, very practical thing that we can do today in our organizations to speed this up is actually from the site side. Um, so usually I speak from the sponsor side and, and some of these issues, but speaking from the, the site side as well, um, one thing that you can really do as a site to really speed up these negotiations in terms of the budget is to provide any of your justification document documentations up front to the sponsor. So what I mean is any documentation you may already have in terms of some fixed costs you may have, um, costs related to your overhead and things of that nature, it is so helpful, it is very helpful during the negotiations if you can just provide those up front to the sponsor as soon as negotiations or the CRO, if, that, if it's a CRO or um, another service provider doing the negotiations, that you provide any justification documents that you have right away, right off the bat, right up front. Um, don't even wait for it to be requested. Don't don't wait for the sponsor, the CRO to ask. Just provide those up front because that indeed really helps in the negotiations um, to just streamline things. It really cuts down, even if it's days at a time or you know, it, sometimes it can cut weeks at a time depending on some processes in, in organizations. So providing that just, just justification documentation upfront from the site side is something that sites can also do to help in site budget negotiations. So there you have it. It's just two of the many things that you can actually do um, for CTA negotiations, specifically on the site budget side. So if this has been helpful, um, make sure that you leave us a comment, you subscribe and to our channel and also share with others that you think may be helped by this information. And also make sure to go to over to our blog, um, to climbiz.com and make sure you subscribe to our newsletter. That way you can be notified first before everybody else um, on any upcoming videos, some great interviews we have in the coming weeks, and also some very exciting news we have in the coming weeks and months um, for the ClinBiz community. You wanna be notified first before everyone else. So make sure you subscribe. Thank you once again, and I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.